For those on energy, we'll, uh, listening, we'll be listening to Heike Karl Zutterstrom, who is Zutterstrom, who's a CEO. I'm oh, sorry, CCO, my apologies. Okay, I go ahead and share my screen here then. So my name is uh, Heike Zutterstrom. I am here from Boson Energy, and I'm here to talk about waste to hydrogen to X. Okay, so as previous speakers have talked about, we are facing a number of challenges globally, including the 2 billion tons of non-recycled waste that is being landfilled and, and burnt. We are also facing major CO2 challenges, but the waste here actually represents an opportunity as well, because with a technology like Boson's, we can eliminate the 2 billion tons of non-recyclable waste and recycle it into hydrogen for local direct use or speed charging. And if we do that, we would actually reduce global energy CO2 emissions by 20%. And we can do that at radically lower system cost and 90% reduction of other emissions that are important, NOx, particulates, etc. And to do this, we have to reimagine waste. And Boson reimagines waste in two steps. First, we use waste to produce hydrogen in a thermochemical recycling process based on gasification. It's a distributed solution with modular execution, so minimal transportation and maximum distributed efficiency. And we can do that with 10 times higher profitability per ton of waste than incineration is capable to do. The second step is the hydrogen to X. Taking that hydrogen, which is a local fuel, which means that it requires minimal infrastructure and basically solves the chicken or the egg situation of the whole hydrogen economy. Because that hydrogen can be either supplied direct as hydrogen but also as grid independent speed charging from hydrogen. And this is profitable today at diesel or grid parity. So we're not waiting for this to be profitable in decades uh, to come. And as I mentioned, both these steps are massively CO2 negative because we are diverting waste from landfill or incineration and we are replacing fossil fuels in transportation. And there's also no grid stress since these, um, both these steps can be operated autonomously without grid access. So what can this do in a hydrogen corridor uh, or a city? Um, there are a number of hydrogen corridors um, throughout Europe, also in Eastern Europe. They are, significant, they are signified by high economic activity, which means that there's a lot of waste produced and that makes them ideal for hydrogen production and speed charging. Looking at the string mega region here, there's 6 million tons of waste going to incineration every year. That could be 600,000 tons of hydrogen instead uh, going to charging stations and used as hydrogen. And in Gothenburg alone, there is 55,000 tons of hydrogen potential. Boson has a strong Polish connection. Um, we have been in hydrogen for the last 30 years through the research of our co-founder, Professor Blasiak, looking at how to extract hydrogen from solid waste and biomass through gasification. He worked together with uh, Jan Grimbrandt, our founder, who is an experienced um, entrepreneur and clean tech entrepreneur who has spent the last 20 years also working in Poland, among other things, uh, cleaning up uh, coal power plant, uh, flue gases, etc. in an earlier startup. Um, he has sold two startups, one to Siemens, AG, and one to Nalco. And we have a lot of solid waste experience in the, in the team. We currently have 10 projects in various stages of development, um, mostly in Europe, including Poland. Um, we are looking at about one year until the first hydrogen is produced in a commercial demo plant. 
we have two projects submitted as national contributions and through the first qualification step in the EPCI on hydrogen. We also have 10 projects uh, included in the European Commission's uh, pipeline um, that is meant to fulfill the EU targets for hydrogen production by 2030. Our technology and execution partners include Siemens Energy, RGI Magnesita, Pure Genesis, Imovit, and a number of other ones. So they are basically responsible for instantly scaling a, a manufacturing and, and assembly capability. And are we alone in the space? No, we're not. There is a handful of advanced thermal treatment players in the market. Uh, Bosoan has chosen a plasma assisted gasification process, which means no ash, maximum flexibility on the waste intake and minimal emissions. It's basically a, a keep things simple solution that is robust, efficient and modular. And when it comes to competition, I mean, to tackle the, the 2 billion tons of waste, we will need to build 60,000 plants um, globally. And this is not undoable um, because these technologies represent an opportunity to leapfrog waste incineration and go straight from the landfilling that is still very used in Eastern Europe and a lot of, of uh, also in the developing world so here there is an opportunity just like skipping from, from no telephony to mobile telephony. We here skip directly from, from poor waste treatment to the most advanced uh, treatment without stopping at the burning, at the incineration. And to conclude, um, hydrogen from waste is not hopium. It is profitable today on market terms once it is being produced. It is actually a necessary shift from incineration, which is burning of waste towards a thermochemical recycling process and a move towards the electrification that is necessary. One key difference here is that we can capture CO2 inside our chemical process, whereas incineration has to capture CO2 from flue gases, which is a lot more complicated. And for producing hydrogen, incineration is completely useless because it actually burns the hydrogen right away in the process and then uses the electricity to produce hydrogen from electrolysis. So as a result, you can only get eight to 10% of the total hydrogen potential out of waste using incineration, whereas we can get up to 65%. So it's radically cut CO2 emissions, um, pollution and power grid stress uh, anywhere, also in uh, developing countries and also in countries around the Eastern European region. Our target is 1 million tons of circular hydrogen from waste by 2030. You're welcome to join us. Thanks a lot, uh, Heike. So we uh, we have a couple of questions already. Maybe, I don't know if it's easiest for you to read them directly from the question box, because the first one is actually uh, secretly three questions. <laughs> okay, I will just uh, stop the share here and get back. If you want me to read them out, I can read them out also if you prefer. Uh, I'll just give that to the platform. It's in the Q&A. The first one is basically asking you about, is the technology that you use Plasma assisted gasification? And yes. Okay. Um, so the cost is, I mean, we can get down to, to two euros per kilo uh, of hydrogen. Um, one important difference here is that as a distributed solution, we don't have the same markup for uh, transportation and distribution. Uh, so um, we, can, we can easily beat decent parity um, and then what the actual the actual per kilo price is depends a bit on on the gate fees in the, that particular market but uh, we have no problems beating um, diesel uh, per kilometer uh, varying ranges of landfill taxes yeah i mean landfill tax we are not exposed to um, we are basically avoiding landfill taxes by 
for for the waste producers by by treating uh, the waste um yeah the the revenue streams uh, is affected of course by by um, gate fees and uh, which is basically what what is paid to to um, treat the waste um what we have in 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 a hydrogen model um, the high the value of the hydrogen is so much higher that the the gate fee becomes a very small part of the business model and that is also what what makes it possible to um, to use this or, or to deploy this in, in developing markets where gate fees are very low. Um, the slag produced is, is a glass material. It is currently used as a, as a filling material uh, or proposed as a filling material as to enhance the performance of, of concrete or just as gravel. I personally find the, the slag quite beautiful. Um, I put the piece of slag in the hands of the, the technology innovation director for one of the global fashion houses and he was also fascinated looking at it. So I personally see a lot of interesting higher value add applications of, of that slag. Um, we have we have to come to the the of, yeah, the, last the percentage yeah. of feedstock is is the percentage that it is. I mean, it, it's typically around forty percent, um, but uh, we we have we we can process a wide range of of waste uh, content, including plastics. Well, thank you very much for your answers and. Um... I want to thank everybody uh, for their uh, really interesting presentation.